All right, let's take a trip down memory lane and take a look at an original Jupiter 8. And I have an original Jupiter 8 here in my office at Roland. And uh, I have this because we do a lot of trainings here at Roland with uh, dealers that we bring in for seminars and clinics. And of course, one of the things that we do is we go over the different types of uh, products in Roland's long history of manufacturing and the different brands and the Jupiter being one of the brands of keyboards that we make along with the Juno series, the SH series, Phantom series and on and on. So again the Jupiter is one of the many models of keyboards in Roland's history. Uh, there's a Jupiter 4, Jupiter 6 and Jupiter 8 and the thing about the Jupiter 8 that's really ingenious is its simplicity. I think a lot of people look at pictures of the Jupiter 8 and they assume that it's a much more complex keyboard than it really is. It's really very simple. One of the things that makes it so simple is the sort of rainbow color coding that's become sort of a signature mark of the Jupiter. You've got the arpeggiation section color coded here, going down to the color coding for the split mode for the Jupiter, moving across then the color coding for selecting patches and then blue is for operating the tape backup system of Jupiter back in 1980 uh, 81 excuse me when it was first introduced could be backed up to cassette tape which was considered quite um, something at that time you can layer different sounds together two patches together you can split two patches across the keyboard or just have one single patch on the keyboard right now I've got just a simple dual patch going on the keyboard. The program of the Jupiter, again, was very, very simple to do. The Jupiter itself is a two oscillator keyboard. So here's oscillator one with four waveforms, oscillator two, same thing with four waveforms, uh, with the fourth being different in the case of oscillator two with noise. You have a balance control between two oscillators, LFO section with four waveforms to choose from, and then moving down, filter section, and then envelopes for oscillator one and oscillator two. And that's it. That's pretty much the programming for the Jupiter. And then in this section, the controller section, then you had ways to assign different elements that you can control with the LFO modulator button, portamento control, and then which side of the keyboard that you wanted to use the control functions to affect. The Jupiter itself when it was first introduced way back when in the early 80s was intended to be able to or it, its intent was to create acoustic sounds as closely as possible. A lot of people associate the Jupiter 8 as having lots and lots of synthesized sounds, but back in the early 80s, uh, prior to the advent of sample-based PCM sound engines, essentially the Jupiter was one of the closest things to be able to try and replicate things like strings, horns, uh, wood wind sounds, things like that, and some simple keyboard sounds. So, again, the Jupiter 8, just to reiterate, um, very simple to operate. Its intention was to be a very powerful live synthesizer. And again, the other side of the Jupiter was because of the color coding and the simplicity of its programming, it was meant to also be very, very user-friendly. And that is the Jupiter 8.